Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Black Lightning. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, there's a the whole situation with Grace returning. I'll go ahead and talk about that. I think it's just particular. The, the timing is peculiar because the fact is she went through so much trouble to run away from Anissa. And maybe it's the thing of just like, oh, the fact of the matter is, like, here I am stealing uh, meds from a clinic to, you know, try and control my abilities. Sure, but I'm just like, the fact that she's coming back into your life now just seems a little, I don't know. Which Anissa is trying to do whatever she can to probably, you know, it's like, oh, I want you to be in my life. I want to be in your life. I want to help you. I want you to know, like, it's okay. Which I also think is kind of interesting. Anissa hasn't told her who she is. She hasn't, like, it's like, you know all this about stuff about Grace, um, but you yourself haven't really told her everything about, you know, you know, whether it be Thunder, whether it be Blackbird. So I just think that's kind of interesting. Maybe that's something that we'll kind of dive into later on. But for now, maybe she's not trying to throw too much at Grace all at once. Maybe, you know, because I feel like that'd be kind of the easiest jumping off point. It's like, I know what you're going through because I'm like you. I'm a metahuman. I mean, to be fair, her situation's quite different from Anissa's. Because it's like, I mean, having a shape-shifting ability like that kind of puts you in a position of like, yeah, identity crisis seems like it'd just be kind of a byproduct of, you know, constantly shifting into other things and people. So you kind of lose a little who of who you are, especially considering, you know, last season we learned a lot about Grace's past and... I wonder, is that just stuff she doesn't remember, or is that just stuff she doesn't want to talk about, which that's another thing, Anissa knows a lot more about you that maybe either you know yourself, or maybe even stuff you just aren't comfortable talking about yet, so we'll see where things kind of go on that front, but I, like I said, I just get this inkling, like, I don't know, the timing's just too interesting, so ultimately, we'll have to wait and see in that regard, so there's that, uh, I like that we do get to see the more, we'll continue to see, you know, Odell's shadier side. And to the point that he's a lot more vindictive in this episode because he got pissed at Tobias because Tobias threw the whole Issa situation in his face. Which is like, Odell didn't like doing what he had to do because no matter what the circumstances is, that was still kind of a kid he killed. So I'm sure that didn't sit well with him. But I think the whole situation of like, because Tobias kind of forced the situation because it's like, you knew that type of information would get him killed. So that's why you maneuvered him in a position where that you would end up speaking the truth, the kind of truth that you wanted to speak just to kind of force Odell's hand. And Odell kind of saw through that and was kind of pissed about it. Especially because he's throwing it in his face like, oh, you took care of that Issa kid, huh? Oh, and you did it yourself too, huh? Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like it pissed, you know, Odell off to the point he puts on some old, like opens up a thing in the ceiling for ultra light to hit him, violet light to hit Tobias and it like boils up his skin and everything, which is like, that's, that's super messed up. Once again, it's like the thing of like, you kind of feel bad for Tobias, even though he is like, the, the the killer and mobster that gangster that he is, but it still doesn't. It's like ah, that's that's um cruel and unusual punishment, as they would say. You know, I'm kind of showing you, like I said, the shadier side of this whole ASA thing. Which I mean, to be fair, the ASA has been shady the entire time. But it was just kind of interesting. And Odell has the audacity to come back, like you know what. I'm sorry. I'm like, really? You expect him to work with you now after you've literally heavily like boiled up his skin with the ultraviolet light and everything? So I just, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And the fact is, he is like, yeah, I lost my cool and whatnot, but it's like, even when you're cool, you seem heartless. I think this is like the most emotion we've seen him kind of emote because he's always just been this cold calculated person and now that was a moment of him just being like i'm i'm pissed right now so yeah kind of i think that was literally his version of a middle finger so that was interesting but obviously you know tobias still doesn't want to give him the information he has i mean we as the audience know that lala has the suitcase but it's like i wonder does even tobias know that lala has it or is it did he think it was just uh somewhere or maybe he's like wherever it is it's fine I, I can't give you the information because even I literally don't know where the suitcase is. But the fact of the matter is, eventually, you know, when I get out of here, I'll get it myself. And he'll probably kill Odell and everyone else. Because, obviously, he wants to kill 
Black Lightning as well. So I, I did like that thing at the end. I'm, I'm wondering, is that something that they're setting up where they're trying to set Tobias against Black Lightning? We'll, we'll see about that. But I think that's probably more so than anything just because of like the serum leaving his system. Like all, like obviously all these medical problems are hitting him. Like what was a high blood pressure, uh, bladder issues, arthritis, like all that's hitting him kind of all at once. So I think that combined with you know, rapid aging, he might be, I mean, because you think about it, he might be entering, like, Alzheimer's stage or something, or dementia, so he, not necessarily in that case, but maybe it's just he's hallucinating, but I'm wondering, is that hallucination a byproduct uh, on a man-made level? And we'll, we'll kind of find out. Um, speaking of man-made, we do see that there is a virus sweeping through the metahumans. It turns out when that metahuman had attacked earlier in the season, that was something Dr. Jace had put together. She had infected him with something that was only going to affect metahumans, and it ends up killing a few people, in, 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 in particular... Uh, Officer King, which, you know, it, it's kind of sad because she pleaded with, you know, Henderson because he was like, you know, if you were a meta, you could have just came to me, out, you know, but she's like, I didn't want to put you in a position where you would have to be trying to protect me. But also, I like, you know, because your duty is to basically report me as a meta human. And I didn't want you to be, you know, I didn't want to have to put that choice at your doorstep, you know. And so, sadly, she dies, but she asked Henderson to do her a favor. Like, some money she had, you know, over the time of her working with the police, took from criminals, which is like, you know... Sadly, you know, that's probably like a, a, a tale of like, hey, you're struggling. It's like, at least criminals, they have money. Why not take a little bit for yourself? It's like, it's not like, you know, anyone's going to miss the money because it's criminal money anyway, you know? But, you know... Henderson does her one last favor, especially considering the fact that she dies and gives the money to her husband and her family, you know, so, which also, you know, I don't envy Henderson at all, obviously, because he's stuck in this hard position because, like, he's kind of under the ASA's uh, boot. They literally have their boot on his throat telling him what to do and literally what to say, and obviously he's the one that kind of has to face the repercussions of it, like, because that old lady kind of yells at him and says he should be ashamed of himself, slapped him, saying, like, the fact of the matter is we finally got a black uh, police chief, and but things were better when the white people ran it, so it's just kind of a thing of, like, he hasn't had the job long, and this situation kind of blows up in his face like that, and it's like, to be fair, it, he doesn't have much of a choice. It's literally the government stepping in, being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is how things are going to go. It's like, you can't really say no to the government. So it's like, but, you know, he's the, fa they literally put him as, like, the face of all of this. So he ends up having to take the brunt of it, which even he's like, no, 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 I got to take it. Like, because even his wife is, like, snapping on Ole, like, whoa, 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 what you think you're doing? Like, you know, but it's like, he's like, I have to take it because this, I understand their frustration, you know? So for him, it's like, I don't know, it's a complicated situation to find yourself in. Uh, what I also like, too, is obviously, once again, showing you who Odell is, once again. Uh, it's the fact is of him manipulating Jennifer. That was really interesting. He'd been like, oh, it was the Markovians that killed uh, Khalil's mom, which is like, okay. So I like how you spun that situation in your favor. Yeah, I was like, of course, it's to get Jennifer on your side. Basically, they're looking for, like, a, a data place and it's like with her ability she'd be able to search it out and destroy it I, I thought you were just going to use her to search it out it's like no you literally use her to destroy it as well so i thought that was kind of interesting she did bring up a thing of like why would a markovian agent kill khalil's mom and it's like well i don't know it's like because i thought that was interesting because it's like this information's coming from odell you know they must the the Freeland PD must not know about her death yet because for Odell to be the first one because you know if this was the case like I feel like Henderson would have been the first one to contact Jennifer but maybe he's busy at the time but I'm I'm just saying that that should be kind of noted the fact is that Odell is coming to you first before anyone else but maybe it's just you know because I think even maybe it's a thing of like even the Freeland PD don't know she's dead yet maybe they do and he's just trying to you know get her more on his side to be like, oh, look, I'm so compassionate. I'm going to be the first one to tell you about what happened to, you know, Khalil's mom. That's how I see it, but we'll see. Um, which is so interesting that you would do that. Like, I wonder, did he plan that in advance or did he go, well, the fact of the matter is, we've already killed her. Well, let's use her death for something for, you know, greater cause and purpose. She, she needed to go anyway because she was already, in his eyes, like, she was running her mouth about the whole... 
ASA being behind, you know, Khalil and everything, so it's like, you know, needed to quiet that down. We also have Jeff getting a new suit uh, this season, which I caught glimpses of it in one of the trailers, but this is our like my first time seeing a really good look at it. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit more of his original suit, not just the one of like the original in this show. Well, the one he had nine years prior, like when he was his original run of um, being Black Lightning kind of reminds me aesthetically more of that. It also seems slimmer because I feel like the one he has for the show that he's had for season one and season two seemed bulkier, but this one seems slimmer. That's why I feel like it's more in line with his original, original suit. Um, obviously, just aesthetically, like different colors, I think. But regardless, it's also interesting because I think he's one of the few people getting new suits this season. And by that, I mean all across the Arrowverse, because I think other than, obviously, Jeff, Kara's getting a new one, got a, well, got a new one, and obviously, I guess if you want to, you know, Kate, because she kind of gets her suit, obviously, she's gotten it now, where her more traditional suit from, you know, the comic books and stuff like that, so uh, I'm, uh, so, but it seems like they're the only ones getting technically new stuff, I mean, I don't know about the other shows necessarily, we'll kind of have to wait and see later on down the line, but still. I do like that they do have that whole aspect of it being in a watch. Obviously, it can probably do a lot more, which I'm very curious to find out what else it can do besides just be his suit. Which is also, I love heroes being able to just carry around their suits. Well, there's a whole thing of like, you know, it's like, oh, like your your suit's underneath your clothes. Like in the, the style of like Superman and Supergirl. Well, I also think it's interesting too because obviously Odell giving... You know Jeff the suit, and obviously he doesn't. He has his issues with Odell, but it's still the glee that's on his face when he gets this suit is actually pretty dope. But kind of showing you, you know, it's kind of interesting because I'm surprised Jeff didn't have anything to say about it. But obviously it's like, oh, I'm just supposed to, you know, come here and save, you know, the people that Odell has sent out to kind of keep a track of the. Markovians ended up getting captured. I was supposed to just come save you guys, but it's like, no, our real mission is coming after Jay. So it's that whole thing of showing, like, Odell doesn't always tell them everything. And that's what makes the last part so interesting to me. The fact is that you let Jeff and Lynn go. Because I guess it's that thing of kind of like, let them feel like they got freedom when not realizing the fact of the matter is you've got them. It's that thing like there is no real freedom in this thing. He's kind of letting it seem like you have freedom. But I'm wondering because it's like you two, like Jeff and Lynn are his biggest asset. So it's like why would you let them go? I mean to be fair, Lynn's going to be working with him regardless to save the pod kids. And obviously I don't think that whole virus situation is 100% resolved. So I think that's something to kind of be considered as well. But maybe, maybe it was kind of resolved off screen whatever the case may be so it's like but why would he just let them go so it's either because of the whole uh chip program to kind of you know brainwash him like he did khalil like maybe because he knows like oh eventually you'll be back because well because i'm sure he wants to keep them because i'm curious like will that even work with jeff because of jeff's abilities like he could potentially affect it and you know and stop it from actually working on him so it doesn't mean that the same thing could be said about Lynn. Because I think for him, it's like, control over other people, sure. He knows how to manipulate the Pierce family to kind of do what he needs them to. So as long as that works, which, I mean, maybe he'll do that for now. But once the chips are, you know, it's confirmed the chips will work. Because obviously because it's working with Khalil. So maybe when the time comes, he will have them chipped too. That's what I was, you know, thinking from the beginning. But, you know, ultimately have to wait and see on that front. Because you can definitely tell Jeff and Lynn are kind of like, yeah, he's up to something. Because obviously Jeff's like, I don't trust you. Like, the thing is, like, what do you want? He's like, the fact of the matter is I'm a man that keeps my word. It's like, yes, you... And that's not even 100... I can't say, well, yeah, you keep your word. Because there is an asterisk behind everything he does and says. You know, the fact is he can be... he Not just can be. I've said it over and over again. He's very duplicitous. So that's a whole angle to things. It is kind of nice, you know, it's like the family's reunited for literally like a second, but everyone else has got plans. Jennifer's like, I'm going to go to bed, and this is going to go back, probably spend time with Grace, or maybe out doing her Blackbird thing. And then, you know, it's like, oh, Jeff's like, oh, you and me, Lynn, we got, oh, you're tired. He's like, great, 
the greatest welcome home. Like, it lasted for a moment. Oh, yeah, we're still... Oh, yeah, we got other stuff to do. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. And Jeff's kind of left on Okay, fought so hard to get back. But sure, okay, whatever you get... Whatever, you know, you guys got your lives and everything. But still, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And since I did bring him up, the whole Khalil thing is interesting. Because it seems like... The, well, I guess the whole point was to turn him into, like, this perfect soldier into this weapon. But he just seems so, like happy about the fact that like, oh, did you know that you can do this with one fatal blow and stuff like that? He's smirking and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, like, there's this, like, almost borderline psychotic uh, confidence that he has of, like, almost like, like, yeah, I'm the shit, you know, because apparently we kind of run through all the different martial arts that he's learned, and the fact is, it's like, oh, like, even the system being like, oh, 23 different martial arts isn't that extreme, and he's like, there are no extremes in war. So, you know, they kind of shifted him into, like like I said, this sadly, this perfect killing machine um, who is obedient and loyal. And, you know, when you look at that, I mean, proof was enough the fact is that he killed his mom. But even more so, the more time you spend with him like that, you realize just how little of Khalil is left, you know? Which is also interesting. I'm curious to see where they kind of take the other story where it's like Jennifer uh, showing that new student and Brandon around and... Apparently, she gives the same tour to everyone else, or she's like, oh, yeah, this is where I was kidnapped by gang members. Me and my sister were kidnapped by gang members. This is where uh, my ex-boyfriend infiltrated the school and whatnot and so forth. It almost seemed like they were setting him up to be like this parallel to Jennifer, because Jennifer... It seemed like last episode she lost a little bit of that optimism that she was holding on to about like, oh, we don't got to be like the animals that they have us caged up like. The fact of the matter is we're better than that. Remember what we're taught, which is interesting because you have Brandon coming there to be kind of like this beacon of optimism um, because he isn't from obviously this isn't the area like he went to school at. This is all kind of new to him. It's all kind of being dropped on him at once. So I just think it's kind of interesting that this is a very interesting interesting time to be transferring schools i wonder what those circumstances were it seems like he might come from a well-off family because jennifer points out his shoes and stuff like that so i don't know i wonder are they setting anything up with that maybe that will clash a little bit with whatever they end up doing with this whole jennifer and Khalil thing this season obviously once again that's something they're not aware of each other but we'll we'll see where things kind of go uh with that whole situation but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until so the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.